All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless Dave here again. Yes, talking about real music and real issues in real time for real people just like you and me. Eric Clapton, again, being destroyed by NBC News. This time, Jeff Slate, uh, who thinks that Eric Clapton's kind of like a so-so guitarist. And uh, the headline pretty much says it all. Eric Clapton's conspiracies mark a sad final act. Bigotry and ignorance in the age of the internet have a way of catching up with you. And Clapton's racism and conspiracy theories can no longer be ignored. Okay. All right. So um, the racism thing, we've covered that. Clapton supposedly apologized, doesn't matter. You can't repent in the cult. You can't say you're sorry in the cult. The cult will not forgive you. You hang out with guys like Robert Cray, um, Nathan East, who I've mentioned quite a few times, who I believe played on Clapton's latest protest song. The one where he says this BS has got to stop. Because that, I mean, that's a sentiment that nobody agrees with, right? This BS should just continue. We should have more BS. BS is healthy. Fear is healthy. Fear, uh, it helps your immune system. Uh, more fear and, and more BS makes you a better human being. See, I, I'm losing it. I'm starting to lose it. And I have a theory. I have a theory, and I'm sure smarter people will jump on Patreon and have better theories, but I have a theory that they're trying to push certain segments of the population like over the edge. Like somebody is just gonna start doing something with some type of, you know, I, I won't say it out loud, but they're, they're gonna start to take matters into their own hands. And I will sit here and go, well, that's really not the way to do this, but There'll be another part of me that'll say, I, I don't know how much people can take, so I kind of understand it. And you'll say, Dave, this is just about Eric Clapton, right? Well, first, there's no repenting. And they say in the age, this guy says, in the age of the internet, hey, hey, Jeff, the internet's been, a long, uh, been around for a long time, right? We're about 30 years into it now. So you could have tackled this Clapton racism thing, I don't know, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you could have taken Clapton out and said, look, uh, he was kind of slumping in his career. You could have made some, I don't know, stuff up about, you know, how just horrible he is as a guitarist now. And he's hanging out with B.B. King. I mean, you do an album with B.B. King, right? That's another good example. Riding with the King. Anyone remember that? Eric Clapton, B.B. King in the car. So their whole, <laughs> their whole premise is that Clapton stole all this music from African-Americans. He just stole it like every musician did because then you have to kind of erase all the music that came after the Black folks kind of invented rock and roll, which they did. I fully acknowledge that. And it's good. Um, Elvis Presley used to go to uh, these places uh, or these, these house parties that were happening. And he would listen to this music being played. And he basically plagiarized it and commercialized it and made it a bit more accessible to the masses. But you would have to impugn everybody, not just Clapton. Now they get on Clapton because blues is the heart of this. And blues is truly something that the African-American community in the early part of the, you know, the last century invented. Nobody's, nobody's, Clapton, if you ask him, he'll, he'll tell you, I'm sure he will tell you who, who his heroes were and they were always African-American musicians. So it, it's like a double-edged sword. So Clapton can't acknowledge these people anymore because he said some stupid crap and nobody's gonna deny that he said stupid stuff. But if you apologize for it, and there's no apologizing today, um, if you're in the cult, the cult does not accept your apology. You can grovel all you want. So this is basically canceling Clapton. This is saying, 
look, we've, we've linked these two things up. Your crazy conspiracy theory about the thing that happened to you, which was an actual event after you did the thing, after we told you to go do the thing so you could go out and perform. Now, if Clapton didn't have any reactions to this, he may not have gone out and become kind of a crusader for the cause of not doing this or telling people that at least that they have a choice. See, this is the other crazy thing. Even though Clapton might tell you not to do the thing, how is that a conspiracy? How is any of this a conspiracy theory? And by the way, who's to say that conspiracies aren't true? Like if you come up with a conspiracy theory, that and they've tarnished that those those words and that phrase because they want to make everybody look like they're wearing a tinfoil hat. Was the uh, was the Tuskegee experiment a conspiracy theory? Was it? And by the way, speaking of African Americans, you've got a super good point guard who plays for the Brooklyn Nets, who's refusing to do the thing. African American now. He's got a bigger platform probably than Eric Clapton. At least right now he does because he's one of the NBA's best players. And he's going on social media. He's doing little videos, basically telling people that he doesn't like what's happening where people are losing their jobs. He is being somewhat outspoken. He's looking around and he's making observations. See, this is the mind-blowing thing that these people have no intellectual curiosity or, see, I keep saying that, but, or it's by design. And it's by design is becoming a more legitimate reason as to why these people would wanna stop information from flowing. Because there's a whole host of information that you won't find on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. I mean, you might actually find some of it on Twitter because they, they kind of let you post stuff and then they red box it or they warn or flag it and they, they make you do a couple of extra clicks to get to whatever it is. But you can get to it. I mean, there are some things that they've outlawed. There are certain sites that you can't just post on there, which is tragic because they're always saying it's misinformation. Okay, I want to know all of the information. Don't tell me what the information is. I want to know all of it. I have an inquiring mind and I want to know. But then there's another basketball player played for the Atlanta Hawks, I believe, who can't play basketball anymore. Can't play. Wanted to play, can't. He gets winded and he's in perfect shape. I mean, and look, I understand maybe it's a small percentage of people that are having these problems, but do we really not come? Like, we don't care about a small percentage of people, like 2%. If it's 2%, do we not care about the 2%? I do. I think uh, it should be, um, they say it's safe, it's effective. So if it's safe, then nobody should worry about it, right? So why are so many people willing to, like, lose their jobs? Why? I mean, you're talking about people who are in the medical profession, like nurses and doctors, they're willing to lose. Southwest Airlines, there's been some weird stuff apparently happening over there that if you mention it, they fact check you and they say, no, that didn't happen. We called, we called Southwest and we asked them. <laughs> yes, we called the bank robber to ask the bank robber if he robbed the bank and he told us no. Okay, I'm, I believe you then. So in the case of Eric Clapton, it's a two-part deconstruction. First of all, he's really not that great of a guitarist. He, he stole all his stuff, and no matter how many records he winded up selling. By the way, no mention of any kind of sympathy for the fact that Eric Clapton's son, Connor, died a horrific death. Nobody cares anymore about that. Nobody shows any compassion or sympathy for that situation. Most of it's probably going to be like, good. I, I, I wouldn't shock me if somebody wrote an article that said, well, 
Clapton deserved, that was because of what he said in the past. He deserved to lose his son. Seriously, I, I, I don't put anything past these people at this point. So you've got, he's not that great of a musician. And now, of course, you've got the R word, because that's those two things. So you, you got to put that together. And then his conspiracies. Again, he went to the restaurant. He got food poisoning, right? And so he's not recommending the restaurant. Done. That's my analogy. If you don't get that, NBC, Jeff Slate, if you don't get it, then you're a moron, okay? And we know you're a moron. And look, all of these writers, okay, keyboard warriors, whatever they are, they're all given assignments. Okay, today <clears throat> we need to take down Clapton. He has a, a big platform. They say he's got a big platform, a big audience. So why aren't you taking down Nicki Minaj, who has a much bigger platform than Clapton? Much bigger. Nicki Minaj, really? All of her fans, all of, she had like, I don't know, 20 billion Twitter followers. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but she had a lot of followers, right? <clears throat> she said some pretty stupid stuff, right? According to you guys. Oh, we took her to task. But Clapton, we know, is, you know, because of all the things he said in the past that he apologized for. And screw Nathan East. He's probably part of the problem, too. What? But he's African-American. See, these, these, this is where it gets Twilight Zoney. This is where, this is why people are starting to melt down all across the world. When I say melt down, like you look in the streets and there are people protesting in the streets. Good. Australia has become a police state. Canada, in many areas, has become a police state. Basically like martial law, right? Curfew? Why? Because it, it, comes out at night, doesn't come out during the day. Oh, people might congregate together and have fun. We can't have that. They might go get drunk because right now it's hopeless. We don't want them doing that. <laughs> it, it's, it's just, it's surreal living through this right now. And the people who just kind of dismiss me as some kind of a ranting lunatic, who's bought into, you know, tinfoil hat conspiracies or whatever you guys think, please stop watching mainstream news and do some research. Use DuckDuckGo and do some searches. And I'm not going to tell you what terms to search for, but I don't know, adverse reactions might be one. I mean, I don't know. People who aren't, you know, doing so well afterwards. I don't know how to put it, but they scrub all this stuff away. And to me, that's, we're getting to the point now where the real conspiracy, not conspiracy theory, the real conspiracy is the lack of information getting to the, the omission. As I've said, and I've, I've even sent letters to my local news station, so I see you're always covering this angle of this story. Have you ever thought to cover the other side of the story where people aren't so thrilled? They won't admit to you that there are many, many people who don't want to do this. They just ignore it. They pretend it's not there. And so when they interview somebody and they say something out of line, they become, wow, the, the story becomes, wow, there are still people who think this way. Back to you, Bob. And, and you, you're sitting there going, hey, they think like me. So part of this is, is like a giant psyop. It's designed to make you feel like you're all alone, like you're out, isolated, like you're crazy. That's the big one. I'm crazy. Eric Clapton, he's crazy. And he's a racist. He's a crazy racist. And with the internet, you can no longer ignore the bigotry and ignorance. Ignorance. He's ignorant. This is a word they throw around a lot. Um, well, I, I would say this. It's kind of sad with the internet that so many people can be ignorant because there's lots of information out there. And it's not that Eric Clapton is ignorant. It's that Eric Clapton has decided to do his own homework and research. And he's also spoken 
see, it's the settled science routine. Well, uh, all of these John Hopkins global funded people agree. They all have, this is a consensus. It's science. Okay. Um, science isn't, if, if science is settled, it's not science. Let me say it again. If science is settled, then it's actually not science. Skepticism, trial and error, because if, if it's settled, then why do anything else? You don't have to do any more science. We know everything now. Really? Really? You know everything? No. Because then, look, the numbers here in the U.S. supposedly are over 700,000. So you don't know squat. You don't know squat. And uh, I would argue and debate all of these numbers that are coming forth. But I'll say this. I'll accept your premise. And then I'll say, well, if the science is settled, you guys are doing a crappy job figuring this out. I mean, they're almost boasting of the high numbers, which is sad. And then they're blaming it on people like me and Eric Clapton. It's your fault. No, it's not. I thought the science was really good. I thought you guys had a handle on this. These people shouldn't be gone. They should still be here. A lot of them. Some of them had other things going on and... I, they would have probably not been here anyway, but there are a lot of those people that probably should still be here. <clears throat> and that's not my fault. That's not anybody's fault who believes in bodily autonomy. I'm staying away from as many people. Believe me, the last two years, I've stayed away from people as much as I possibly can because they're all crazy. You go out, you see a guy walking outside my window here, right? All alone, sunny day, wearing a medical device on his face. That's crazy. That's nuts. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that. He's alone in the sunshine. Tell me why he should be, because he's scared and he thinks if he does this, he's helping other people. This is what everybody's up against. So um, this is way more than deconstructing Eric Clapton. This is deconstructing anyone. If you read this article, you're going to put yourself in his shoes to some degree. Well, I think that too. Well, I think this, but then you've got all the people on the thread on all these stupid things, like on Twitter, someone showed me one and they're like, yeah, it's about time. You know, I, I loved journeyman, but I just, I'm going to dump it in the trash now. Okay, great. That's going to solve the world's problems. Think of how stupid and how useless and how misspent all of this talk and energy is when you could be really figuring this stuff out and helping people. But instead, let's just deconstruct Eric Clapton. It's about time we get rid of this guy. And then when Eric Clapton does finally leave planet Earth, nobody will care. The news media will be like, good riddance. Good riddance. He was trouble. He, he had a horrible career. Uh, and he had some of the worst ideas ever known to man. It's, it's insane, people. It's completely insane. And by the way, even if all that were true, even if that were true, there are so many larger targets to shoot at if you really believe the stuff that you believe, right? And this goes for, you know, like I said, what about the guy who plays basketball? Brooklyn Nets, he's a big target. Shouldn't he you know, be called all kinds of names, conspiracy theorist, whatever? I mean, it's funny. It's funny because then, you know, some, some of the African-American people can then be called, well, they're really just white people. They're just, it's the same. Doesn't matter what color their skin is or their life experience or anything else. This is why people, here's my advice to people who, are critical thinkers. We, we need to unite with all of the people, black, white, red, brown, yellow, whatever color you are. We need to unite. And we need to love each other through, through this crisis. Because it is a crisis and it's a war. And if we don't unite and love each other and think critically and try to find solutions to these problems on our own, we're going to get crushed by the state. The state's coming. 
Australia, Canada, um, Iceland, um, Israel. These, all these countries are unhinged right now, and they don't believe in freedom. They don't believe in liberty. They don't care. They don't care. The health cult, the public health cult, is more important than anything else right now. Even if you know, you've know you got a lull where you are, like I do right now, there's a lull. There's, it's, it's, it's not exploding numbers and so forth. I, I, I'm sure that's going to change once the amount of sunlight drops to a certain level. It's already, I think, happening up in the Midwestern states. Um, we're going to be do, dealing with this for a very long time and maybe permanently. And if we don't push back, um, life as we've known it will, will definitely be over. And I, I don't know how we're going to get that back. So I know this is a, a video about Eric Clapton. I'm supposed to be running a little fun music commentary platform. It, everything is way too serious now. And I, and I hate it. I hate it. I want to go back to the way things were.